Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Unitron subsidiary Megabus has procured 10 Scania 280 horsepower, 100% compressed natural gas buses. Megabus will trial these buses for the next five years at its free state operations. Mia Breitenbach tells us more. These buses comprise the first Euro 6 bus engines in Africa. The official handover of the buses was concluded in conjunction with Scania's first South African Sustainability Seminar in Kempton Park, which was held in Gauteng in May. Unitrans Technical Director Leon Nelson explained the requirements for these buses. We start off to have at least a bus with the same specification or similar specifications to those of diesel buses. The diesel buses we are using um, are 260 and 300 horsepower buses and this specific bus is 280 horsepower, so it fit in um, the diesel spec for comparison reasons because this is one of our main drives is to compare um, this vehicle with that of a diesel. The buses will operate from the mega bus depot in the town of Virginia and service the mining industry. These buses will undergo testing in terms of downtime, fuel consumption and maintenance costs for a comparison with their diesel equivalents. The main drive today in the world is environmental savings and um, this was the main drive to see how this bus compared with a diesel bus and in the same time uh, results from this bus um, you will have a reduction in NOx emissions of 94%, particle emissions of 98% and CO2 emissions by as much as 90%. Nelson noted that if the results would be promising Unitrans and Megabus would look further into the potential of these buses and their alternative fuel technology. The technology is, is well known in the world but it's unknown to South Africa and because it's unknown it creates a, a situation of resistance to change and um, that's, that's one of the main motivators from our side to break that resistance to change and to show South Africa what is available and what can be achieved. Scania was the technology providers in providing the complete solution for Unitrans and Megabus. Scania South Africa Alternative Fields Key Account Manager Anthony King explained the features of the buses. Uh, basically these are uh, CNG tanks, carbon fiber, we call them type 4 tanks. They are the lightest that we can get to make sure that uh, we can get the maximum amount of seating in this particular bus. At the moment we got 60 seats which is what the customer required and at the same time making sure that the, the safety is designed around the tanks. On this bus we got eight tanks uh, which gives us about uh, 1,200 cubic meters of gas and that will give us a range of about I would say approximately four to five hundred kilometers. This particular engine is a nine litre Scania engine. What we're looking at is uh, it pushes out 280 horsepower and if you're looking at that kind of package uh, the engine is more than capable um, from the point of view that uh, it, it's, it's the closest you can get to diesel technology and uh, from what we've seen is that uh, the gas technology we see here is the same Euro 6 technology technology that they actually have in Sweden at the moment. So we're getting the same technology as we speak in Africa. What's key as well is to use an alternative fuel to reduce the uh, CO2 and the emissions and also to create comfort around the driver and also the passengers that will be using the vehicle. From a customer point of view it was also to look at Unitrans and their requirement in terms of uh, reducing maintenance costs and I think with this and looking at the service intervals we should be able to maintain that. The gas for the buses will be sourced from a free state natural gas resource. This resource is currently being developed by Renogen subsidiary Tetra 4. Renogen acquired Malopo South Africa Exploration and Production, now known as Tetra 4, in November 2015, in a deal valued at 650 million rand. Construction of the compression facility is complete and the initial gas has been compressed. This marks the first major step towards creating an energy-efficient gas economy in the free state. The CNG compression station will process about 210 gigajoules of natural gas a day. These will then be stored in 40-foot tube containers, known as skids. The skids will be transported to the mega bus depot and connected to the dispensing station to dispense the gas from the cylinders to the bus CNG tanks. Megabus and Tetra Force contract for the supply of the CNG marks the first sales of locally produced onshore natural gas, according to Renogen CEO Stefano Marani. For us, this marks a major, major milestone. This is the culmination of, um, of the acquisition that took place in November, and this shows proof of concept, plus it also brings Tetra Force to a point of revenue. Essentially, what you see today 
is the commencement of operation. We have a fully functioning compression site down in Virginia and uh, we're now going to commence actually dispensing gas to our first customer in Virginia. Scania also handed over a Scania biodiesel truck which would operate in Cape Town and a 2x4 270 horsepower ethanol powered distribution vehicle which would operate in Durban to respective customers. With regard to biodiesel it allows for about a 60 6% CO2 reduction for the ethanol vehicle that will be going to Durban. We're looking at a feedstock of sugarcane which will give us about a CO2 reduction of about 90%. And also what we're saying is this, is that uh, we're looking at energy security. So it's about having your own fuel supply and sustaining uh, whatever you actually grow. But at the same time it's about creating jobs. And if you're looking at where Africa is at the moment, we need to create jobs. So coupled with all that, um, it allows for a, more, a much more sustainable package. That's our aim, is to re reduce CO2 emissions. And and if we can align it now with customers that are receptive to change, then it allows for a more sustainable area going forward in relation to, to climate change. Other news making headlines this week. Brexit deals resilient South Africa a new complication. And South Africa should ensure small business participation through JVs and FDI investments. As the UK's decision to withdraw from the European Union sent ripples of uncertainty and volatility across an already unsteady global economy, Finance Minister Praveen Gordon has moved to assure the public of the country's strong trade ties and resilience. We have seen that uh, currencies have become volatile, the rand has uh, depreciated, the uh, share market in the London Stock Exchange uh, has lost significant amounts of money, and all of these uh, are reactions to the decisions that have been made in the United Kingdom. However, the Trade links between South Africa and uh, the European Union and Britain uh, are fairly strong and are based on solid agreements. And uh, we have a two-year period during which whatever changes need to be made to agreements and treaties uh, can in fact be made. South Africa has to find ways of ensuring that small businesses participate actively in the global markets, not just through export facilitation, trade exhibitions and market access opportunities, said Small Business Development Minister Ndiwe Zulu. Most importantly, we need to look at our domestic challenges and find ways of ensuring that small businesses participate actively in the global space, not just through export facilitated through trade exhibitions and market access opportunities obtained through preferential market opportunities, but also through joint ventures access to foreign direct investment and access to capacity building and opportunities. The statistics South Africa shows that exports to sub-Sahara Africa currently make um, up close to 20% of South Africa's total merchandise export, excluding gold. These exports made up a very high share of total imports within many of Southern African countries, 50% of, Zim of, of Zimbabwe imports, 41% of Mozambique imports, and between 30, 20 and 30 of total imports, Zambia, Malawi, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Positive trade cooperation has also been noticed between Africa and Asian countries. For example, exports from Asia to Africa grew at 20% uh, per year from 2000 to 2005. South Africa has relations with the rest of Africa, therefore provided with an opportunity to benefit from the strong economic growth in the Asian economies. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.